Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Wiltshire series. Wiltshire has some of the most spectacular scenery of any county in England. It also has some stunning villages. So let's dive in and see what this one has in store for us. Welcome back to Wiltshire, everybody, and the last one in this little run in February. I'll probably save the best one until last, and you'll see why it's the best one when we get to the very end of this episode. But first, we have to walk around a village that's full of, li of these little footpaths. They're all over the place in this one, so there's no excuse really for not getting between you know, various parts of it, because you know you can you can use these to your heart's content. This is Bratton. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Bratton, cultivated settlement. I hope you're ready for this one, folks. So far in Wiltshire, we've covered some truly wonderful places, ones that look stunningly beautiful. That's Wiltshire in a nutshell, but future episodes are going to have to go some to beat this one. This is Bratton, a village that lies about two and a half miles away from Westbury, again under the northern slope of Salisbury Plain. Bratton was famous for a major industrial works that was known nationally. The Bratton Iron Works, which began as a humble blacksmith in 1799, grew to become the largest employer in the area. It closed in 1970 and none of its buildings now stand, but its history has not been forgotten. The village is pretty amazing for quite a few reasons. There are several stunning buildings, like Bratton House and the Courthouse, for example. It's had many notable residents in its time, including Major General Sir Jeremy Moore, the commander of the British Land Forces during the Falklands War, and Rebecca Smith, the last British woman to be executed for infanticide. Watch this one right to the end, because within Bratton's boundaries is one of the largest, literally, symbols associated with Wiltshire. It's located upon a hill with a panoramic view like none other we've ever witnessed. Let's get moving and see what it could be. We begin on Manor Fields, a dead-end street right in the heart of Bratton, which features some newish housing. This is not typical of property in the village, as you'll soon discover. At the end of the road, you're met with the village's main recreational space, a playground that dominates the centre of the village. As well as this, Bratton has a second recreation ground too on Trowbridge Road, which is where the village cricket club play. Before the 1970s though, this simply didn't exist, and the reason why can be found by walking to the main entrance on Melbourne Street. The playground was the site of Bratton Ironworks, which is memorialised by way of this plaque, complete with an industrial cog and brick wall. This was unveiled in 1993. Bratton Ironworks was the colloquial name for R and J Reeves and Sons. They made agricultural machinery and the business was very successful. It began as a blacksmith's in 1799 but soon grew to be nationally known. It was the largest employer in the area. It closed in the early 1970s and the play area was developed in its place. It's hard to imagine how much different this would have looked just 50 years ago. 
Next is Bratton Primary School. This was formed in 1928 when the village's two previous schools merged. We'll be seeing one of those former schools later. This school was extended in 1982 and now serves as one of the main primary schools in the area. Note the logo too, it's a horse. That's important and we'll discuss why later. But next, we have a footpath to follow towards the Georgian Grade 2 listed Melbourne House, built in 1768 by William Whittaker. The Whittakers were wealthy clothiers and mill owners in the Westbury area and had been since the 16th century. In front of the house is the War Memorial. This was donated by the Diggle family, the owners of nearby Bratton House, shortly after the end of World War I. Their son was one of the locals who served in the war, but he returned safely. The memorial features the names of the 20 villagers who didn't. A right turn now when we're heading along Melbourne Street past the main village amenities. Here's the local shop, the only one that remains in Bratton these days. It dates back to 1906, but it does have a modern extension added in 2002. It includes a bakery and a post office. There were four pubs here at one time, but now only one remains. This is the Duke, which dates from the 18th or early 19th century. It was originally three cottages before becoming a pub. These days it also includes a popular restaurant too. Over the road from the Duke is the Jubilee Hall, which features the parish notice board. Tick it off people, that's five Wiltshire villages in the books. The Jubilee Hall is one of two community centres in Bratton. It's got some nice mosaics on its walls. This one was added in 2022 for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. The Jubilee Hall was built in 1887 and it's been extended twice, firstly in 1987 and then again in 2002. This is where the Jubilee Players Amateur Dramatic Group are based and it's also hired regularly for individual events. There's another mosaic near the entrance. Again, horse themed. Keep that in mind for later. Outside the entrance you'll also find the local book exchange looking extensively stocked. On a patch of green close by is a sign stating Bratton was awarded the title of best kept large village in Wiltshire. It doesn't say which year though, frustratingly. The other communal building Bratton has is the Church Institute on Tyning Lane. This is 19th century and it's where the Bratton Silver Band meet to practice. Several other organisations are based here, many of which are for children. Let's amble down this road back to Melbourne Street once again. We formed a neat little loop by doing that which has brought us to Bratton House and its collection of gorgeous associated buildings. Bratton House dates from 1715 and was originally built for Philip Ballard. It was later enlarged in 1826 for the Seagrams. In more recent times the Diggles owned the property before the diplomat Horace James Seymour came along. The only time this hasn't been occupied by a family was during World War II when it was used by St Mary's Convent School who were evacuated from Hampstead. Next we head eastwards down a steep hill. Now of course the one downside to going downhill is that you've got to go back up it at some point and here in Brasson we do that via a street called Stradbrook which takes us all the way up to St James's Church right at the top of the hill. Hope you've got your boots on. Surrounded by hills in and of itself, Stradbrook was the location of one of the two former schools in Bratton. It was along here that a British school was located, which was designed for and used by the children of non-conformists. It was built in 1846. Rushing water hits your ears soon along here. The water belongs to Stradbrook itself, which originates at Lookham Spring, just south of here. It gushes free-flowing, chalk-filtered, crystal-clear water into an enticing pool before feeding the privately owned Lookham Mill and eventually exiting the area via Stradbrook. Lovely spot this. Sticking with water, here's St Catherine's Well. This area was where pilgrims from Canterbury set up camp for three days while walking the length and breadth of the country visiting every church named in honour of St James. They described the water at this site as the purest they had ever drunk and so named it St Catherine's Well. Next we follow the stream past one of the four mills which used to be located upon it before the road starts to climb. As you can see the springs have forged deep valleys which make this part of Wiltshire the most wonderful place to wander. 
Those pilgrims would have wandered the same path as us. At the top of the hill is St James's Church. This is all that's left of a former settlement known as Littlestoke, one of three settled by the Angles and Saxons which eventually formed what we know today as Bratton. Grade 2 listed, this church has 14th century origins and may be located on the site of an earlier church. It was rebuilt in the 15th century, probably as a result of the Black Death. The chancel was then reconstructed again in 1854 by G. G. Scott. Further restoration by T. H. Wyatt then followed in 1860. St James's was originally a chapelry of Westbury, and after many attempts spanning 300 years, it became an independent parish church in 1845. Now, of course, we're at the top of a hill here, which means we've got to go back down again. In actual fact, what we've got to do is cross the stream in the valley bottom. To do that, you have to follow some rather vertigo-inducing steps out of the churchyard before crossing a footbridge. I can only imagine how hard it must have been to build this, given the steep gradients. But I was thankful that I didn't have to go all the way to the valley floor. Those steps. There's quite a few of them. They remind me a little bit of the ones in Leon C, if you've seen that video a long, long time ago, from back in my first year of doing TVI. Now I'm my fourth. Yeah, there's a lot of those. But you know, there's only one way to get back up from the valley, and that's climb the hillside again. I'm actually, you know, glad it steps and not a, a hill, to be fair, because, you know, if, if, if it had been raining, it had been muddy, I might be slipping back down. I'm still climbing here, but I'm almost at the top. And when we get to the top, we'll be back into civilization. Back into civilization, we're now on Upper Garston Lane. Our next landmark is the Oratory, where this street meets the Butts. This used to be Bratton's National School, and it's now a house. It dates from around 1820, although some sources claim 1846. It was enlarged in 1877. Bratton actually had a third school too, Whitaker's, which is now Yew Trees on Lower Road, and the British school on Stradbrook was to become an ex-servicemen's club. Via the butts, we're making our way to Westbury Road now. Fun fact, this street used to be called Bats Lane. Now for some truly lovely buildings. Here's the manor house located at the edge of civilization out to the west. In Saxon and Norman times and on into the Middle Ages, Bratton was owned by various manors with the ownership changing often. Buildings were generally short lasting, but some of them have stood the test of time. There are no fewer than 45 listed buildings in Bratton. It would be impossible to tell you everything about every single one, but 15 of them are all clustered together in this northwestern corner. One stands head and shoulders above all the rest. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on the magnificent courthouse, easily the most visually stunning building in the entire village. Its central beam bears a date of 1626, but it's far, far older than that. Most of it dates from the 14th century. Originally, the property was called Winks, named after the builder of the original Crook, long before registers began in 1542. As its name suggests, this was the literal courthouse for Bratton Manor. A great deal of nonsense has been written about its supposed links to the infamous Judge Jeffreys, but he never came to Bratton. Lastly, we make our way back into the network of footpaths that you can find in the village, and this one takes us directly into the grounds of Bratton Baptist Chapel. There have been several non-conformist chapels in various parts of the village, including a Methodist chapel which was built in 1870 and closed in 1952. That building was demolished in 1957, leaving this as the only to remain in Bratton today. Built in 1734 and extended several times, this is still very popular and attracts a congregation from many neighbouring villages as well as Bratton itself.
Okay, we are all the way around Bratton, but of course we are not quite done with this one yet. All those buildings and references to horses will all now make sense with this last landmark which is out towards Westbury. And trust me folks, I have saved the absolute best until last. If you drive to the southwest away from Bratton, you'll be climbing the very steep Westbury Hill to Bratton Camp on the western edge of Salisbury Plain. This is also known as Bratton Castle, despite the fact there's no actual castle here. What there is though is a massive, and I mean enormous, Iron Age hill fort. This hill fort, one of the many in Wiltshire, was one of those excavated by Geoffrey Whittaker in the mid 1700s. We'll see the earthworks shortly, but we've also come up here to see one of Wiltshire's most famous landmarks, the Westbury White Horse. The horse is a hill figure, first documented in 1742. It lies on the western slope of the hill fort, and it's believed to be the oldest of its kind in Wiltshire. To get to it, we have to cross Bratton Long Barrow, easily the biggest we've ever covered. These earthworks are absolutely stunning. These have revealed so many secrets of past times. Both cremations and burials have been found here, some of the latter intermixed with pottery and animal bones. Whittaker's excavation was poorly documented, but we know most of this from later digs by William Cunnington and Sir Richard Colt Hoare. And here we are at the Westbury White Horse. It is far, far bigger than it looks on camera, and also far bigger than it looks from the valley below. The horse is 180 feet tall and 170 feet wide. It was restored in 1778, an action which may have obliterated another horse that once occupied the same slope. Two other white horses can be seen from up here, namely those at Devizes and Alton Barnes. Both Westbury and Trowbridge can be seen from here, as can the Mendip TV mast in Somerset. The panoramic view up here is something else. Don't take my word for it though, just watch this. So I've tried to find my way to the highest point here. I don't think it really matters where the highest point is, to be honest with you, because wherever you stand, you're gonna get a good view. But I think I'm at the highest point. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it wonderful? I am awestruck by this. It's unbelievable. I don't wanna leave, but of course I've got to, or else I'd never make another video, would I? Although it's the oldest of the horses in Wiltshire, the origin of the Westbury White Horse is obscure. It's often claimed to commemorate King Alfred's victory at the Battle of Ethendon in 878 AD. That would actually make a lot of sense. Close to the car park is a stone that was placed to commemorate the battle, because it allegedly took place here. Nobody knows the exact spot, but it's believed to have been within a few kilometres of the Westbury White Horse. The horse has been adopted as a symbol for the town of Westbury, appearing on welcome signs and the logo of its tourist information centre. It's also considered a symbol for Wiltshire as a whole, and as we already know, many places in Bratton use it too. What a way to end this first run in Wiltshire. It's been so much fun, and I am so excited to come back for more. Hopefully, it won't be too long. Bye for now. for watching this video folks don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already it really makes a difference with youtube if you're new here subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it you can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel also if you've enjoyed this episode have a look at some more videos in this series until next time i've been andy also known as the village idiot and i'm out